Right, this is an A65 engine that I'm putting together to replace the blown up one that had a hole in the front of it the size of Africa and uh, it also blown to pieces the cylinder barrels and uh, it was as a result I think of breaking a conrod. So we've got some very fancy expensive looking conrods in there now which arrived the other day and I've just fitted them to the crank with new big end shells. They are this R&R &R racing products make and uh, they're supposed to be far superior to the originals and really ought to be far superior to a set of old originals I would hope. Anyway so they're in there we've got nice new big end shells as well a new drive side main bearing and the, uh, the time inside bush in the donor cases was in remarkably good condition and uh, the fit between the journal, the time inside journal on the crank and that bush was excellent so um, I'm not worried at all about reusing uh, the bush uh, with the crankshaft that we've got there, the measurements were really good but I thought seeing as how the crack in the crank cases ran through the drive side I originally thought it might have gone through the bearing housing uh, but it didn't I thought we'd better have um, a replacement bearing for the drive side so uh, we've got a new roller main bearing in there so obviously between that and the crank I'm using not being the original for these cases and um, obviously being a mismatch I had to do uh, and having a new main bearing I've had to shim it and uh, set the end float which Apparently we're permitted between one and a half thousandths of an inch and three thousandths of an inch. Now I've got a clock there that uh, goes up in increments of one thousandth of an inch. The naught to the ten, by the time you get to the ten, that's ten thousandths of an inch. So each individual sort of space between the tiny marks is one thou. Let's see what we've got. I've got the cases clamped together with three G cramps and I've got two nuts on the studs there underneath the uh, thing that I've got the uh, gauge resting on so it's well held together tightly and um, obviously I haven't been using the full sets of nuts and bolts and studs because I've had to take it apart a few times and rearrange the shimming but uh, I finally think I've got what I want let's have a look and if I lever the crank we've got this big screwdriver here and I'm levering the crank via its flywheel upwards and I've got the clock set up there and that's on zero let's see what we've got we've got not quite two thousandths of an inch we're allowed between one and a half and three thousandths of an inch so I'm going with that, I'm happy with that. It also spins freely. I can put my finger in and turn it by the flywheel there. And uh, that's nice and free, so that's good. So it's the end of my working day, but tomorrow I'll be taking this lot apart, getting the uh, G-cramps off and unbolting it, and I'll be applying uh, gasket sealant and not forgetting the little rotary breather disc that's driven off the end of the camshaft I'll oil everything up some more and the cases can go back together and I can actually bolt them together and we're gonna have a bottom end pretty much ready to go and a gearbox that we know is in good shape so uh, finally we've got some real worthwhile progress and I'm happy to draw a line under the day's work where I am now knowing that the end float is set and I can just bolt this lot together and uh, carry on with the build.